Hi friends, welcome back to another podcast episode and we have three finished objects for you today. Not one, not two, but three finished objects. I've been busy, it's been a little while, but I've been trying to keep you up to date with some of the shorts, so um, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you aren't already um, so that you can get updates in between uh, my larger long form videos with my shorts. So today I've got three finished objects for you as well as two works in progress that I want to give you updates on and uh, let's get into today's video. <music> So the first finished object that I have coming at you that I promised that I was going to get done before we met again was my Fairbank shawl. And it is a gigantic shawl with 12 minis and uh, two sets of coordinating contrasting colors in between. Um, it's probably a little too big. I didn't think about that, but I'm glad I stopped when I did. So for this shawl, I used the mini skeins from the Sorella X Tony Lipsy collection that was done in um, 2023. And um, the coordinating color um, is Surf City in her nylon sock. And then I chose 12 of the 15 minis. The only minis I didn't use were um, a couple, uh, two of the neutrals or one neutral and two of like the pinky reds, um, rust maybe. Um, they're just, there was almost too much towards the end. And honestly, at the end, I just wanted to be done. Um, as you can see, I just decided <laughs> to be done. And so this pattern is pretty heavily modded. I didn't really follow the pattern, but it's heavily inspired by the Fairbank shawl by Tony Lipsy. And um, uh, some of the modifications that I made were I did these um, T stitches, um, spike stitches. Um, every time in the first row that I did um, a new mini um, and uh, that was something that was supposed to be towards the end of the Fairbank shawl. Um, the end also called for something completely different here. I just decided to keep going with the alternating minis and the contrast color. Um, and then at the end I did um, the spike stitches with the last uh, two rows of the coordinating color. Um, I also doubled the amount of yarn in between the minis, which probably led to such a huge shawl. Um, but I think this will be really cute, cozied. Um, I'm going to take some pictures. They'll probably not be done before this video, but they'll be up on my Ravelry, Ravelry soon. And I'll do a post on my Instagram with a kind of finished object um, shot for you, kind of to see it kind of styled and cozy. Um, but it's that boomerang shawl design. And so I was finally able to get this. This is actually the most recent finished object. The other two that I'm about to show you, um, I finished first because I had deadlines on those. Um, and then I finished this one just because I wanted to get this off the hook and so that I could cast on another project. So that is my Fairbank shawl by Tony Lipsy with Sorella Nylon Sock Minis. I definitely enjoyed working with this yarn quite a bit um, because with a normal crochet hook, um, it was just a dream to work with. Um, it glide through really easy. Um, and so, cause I'm gonna bring up some points later on in the video about some of uh, Sorella's other yarn that I'm working with that I'm not quite as happy with but I don't know again if it's the yarn or the tool it might be the tool so I might have to give it a shot with regular crochet hooks but that was my Fairbank shawl and that is my first finished object of the video so 
So the next finished object that I have for you, it's not going to look like it's a finished object because I've done a little bit with it, but I finished my test for Kayla Woods from K Crochets. I'll put links to everything below. Um, this vest is not out as of the time of recording, but I believe it's coming out this week. So if that at all changes, I will put uh, links to both the pattern and I believe she's doing a video tutorial in uh, the description below. So this is the Driftwood Vest and it's Tunisian Crochet, which is amazing. I love this vest. I love the design. What really drew me to this vest was the design. I love this honeycomb section. And then this just really reminded me of garter. Um, and so I really loved that. Um, I made a few mistakes in this, not to the pattern, but if I were to do this again, here's what I would do. So first of all, the yarn is Ella Ray Cozy Alpaca, which is a 70% acrylic. 30% alpaca yarn. It uh, creates really great stitch definition, but there's some plying issues and so it splits easy. So like when I was using my Tunisian crochet hook and I would wrap my yarn, um, like yarn over and, and wrap my yarn around it, it would kind of flatten and it could cause some splitting issues. Um, I think this yarn will, would work really well with regular crochet hooks um, because it actually did um, both on my on my ribbing details so around the arm the neckline um, and the bottom it worked really well um, so it's definitely not the greatest yarn for Tunisian crochet I would also consider it was marked as a, a pattern that you needed worsted weight um, and so this yarn was marked as like a heavy DK worsted weight. I might consider perhaps using a gauge calculator and changing a little bit to get more of a DK weight um, yarn. I had a really hard time meeting uh, gauge on this. So it took me quite a while to meet gauge. I actually had to go down one and a half hook sizes. So it calls for a six and a half millimeter um, Tunisian crochet hook. I ended up having to use a five, which then just caused a lot of issues. I met gauge, um, stitch gauge, but I was not able to meet row gauge. I didn't think that was too big of a deal um, because I can always shorten or lengthen as necessary. But then it caused me to use more yarn than the pattern called for. So that was a little bit of a drawback. I don't even know how I could have met both stitched gauge and row gauge. I know that Kayla said that she is a loose um, Tunisian crocheter. So that might have just been in the differences of our own um, crochet style. Um, but perhaps if I had chosen a different yarn um, where I could have either used a six or six and a half millimeter crochet hook, I would have liked that a little bit better. Also, this yarn is very heavy uh, because I had to use extra and also just, I think the acrylic weighs it down quite a bit. Um, so it's definitely not a pattern that I'm gonna wear. Um, like it's just, it's just super heavy. I have full sweaters that I feel are lighter than this. Um, so I'll probably wear this over like a t-shirt and style it over a t-shirt. Um, but I probably won't wear it over like a long sleeve shirt, which is what a lot of people uh, who tested it styled it over. Um, I live in Southern California, so that just doesn't make sense for me. Um, and I say that this is almost a finished object. It was a finished object, um, but since then I have decided after wearing it a little bit to pull out the neck line and redo it. Um, one side just ended up being like, I'll, sh I'll put some pictures of the finished object um, that I took when I completed it, but one side ended up being like really, really wonky 
on just when I did it. And so like it just created extra fabric fabric up here. And so I didn't really like that um, after wearing it for a little bit. And so I was going, I'm going to rip it out and redo it. I have some extra yarn. Um, so I'm going to do that. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed this. It's a pretty quick um, process. Um, the test was four weeks. She gave us extra time. So I think it ended up taking me about five weeks now. Obviously, that was with doing other um, projects at the same time although I really was only focused on two projects at that time because they were both tests and they both had the deadlines um, but the panels work up pretty fast it's the crochet ribbing that just seems to take forever and I'm not a big fan I just crochet ribbing just I do not love it's just it's really time consuming um at least when you're ready to be done and then you have a bunch of crochet ribbing to do. Um, so I definitely think it's pretty beginner friendly, um, Tunisian crochet beginner friendly. So if you're looking for something that has a couple different stitches that you can play around with because you're using the purl stitch, the simple stitch. Yeah, I mean, you're using the purl and the simple stitch. Um, uh, to create the honeycomb and then there's simple stitch definitions and then purl stitch which creates that faux garter look um, but overall a really great piece that if I did this again I'm considering it I might make a mini version the pattern doesn't have sizing for like toddlers or younger kids Kayla, if you're listening, that might be a great addition to this pattern or a mini version of the pattern because um, I would love to match my my little. But I might consider just playing around and, and making a, a mini one for my daughter in the future. Maybe. Who knows? Um, but you should definitely check it out. This is the Driftwood Vest by K Crochets, Kayla Wood at K Crochets. So my last finished object for the video today is the Sincere Shawl by Jen Lovett, uh, Violet.loops on Instagram. And it is a very gorgeous Tunisian crochet shawl that coordinates, uh, coordinating colors. So the Yarn that I used here was Sincere Fiber Co's Mountain Mist, which is, uh, I believe, 100% Superwash Merino. Um, the colorway Winter Night um, and Indecision? Indications. Indications. Um, so Winter's Night is that variegated, and then um, Indications is this lovely kind of peacock dark peacock green uh very elegant and I love it I've worn it several times since finishing it up um it consists of two different types of Tunisian crochet stitches you have your lattice stitch which I found out that is not my favorite Tunisian crochet stitch um, it's pretty time consuming and also I feel like it was really hard for me to keep gauge um, on it. It's really easy to have a really tight gauge with Tunisian lattice stitch um, and so it was really hard for me to just keep gauge. I was constantly having to like make sure I was pulling up enough um, and holding kind of the stitches so that way they wouldn't kind of get really tight on my hook. Um, and then you have Tunisian knit stitch. Um, you use some other stitches to kind of separate your sections. Uh, I don't want to give too much away. Um, but it's another pattern test that I've done for Jen. I really love her work. I've done a couple of her stuff now. Um, and I really like pattern testing for Jen. Um, yeah, this is the Sincere Shawl. And um, unfortunately, by the time this goes up, both the colorway kits 
uh, pre-order and the sale on the Sincere Shawl will have passed, but um, definitely still worth checking out the pattern on Ravelry. So the next thing we're going to talk about are my two whips that I have on my hooks and needles right now. Uh, one is a knitting project uh, and one is um, a Tunisian crochet project, another test for Jen at Violet Loops. First whip that I have for you is my Lento, which has come really far since last we met. Um, I have split for sleeves and I'm now on the body and just working in the round, um, stockinette stitch in the round. The last we checked in, I was here um, right before splitting for sieve. I think I was like four or five rows uh, or more, I don't remember, but uh, short of splitting for sleeves. And so I've made this significant way. Uh, first time I've split for sleeves. Um, and so this is the Lento, uh, and um, I am using Ruby and Roses Mistletoe Mixer. Um, the bases are Soft Rose and Rose Cloud, I think. Um, it's their Superwash 85 Superwash 15 Nylon base along with their Surrey base, um, held double. And um, I'm using, I think, six millimeter needles. And I have, um, this is probably, well, I completed one full skein of each and I'm on my second skein of each. I will most likely finish the body still with those second skeins and start, um, casting on my one of the arms before I even need to get into the third skein. If I'm lucky, I might even be able to get most of the sweater out of four skeins, which is unheard of, which is really what attracted me to the Lento because it is knit with such a large gauge, um, large needles. And so um, I really like the idea as a plus size person to have a sweater that doesn't take you know, six, seven, eight skeins of yarn. And so um, I'm really excited to see what I end up, like what my final yardage is. I'm gonna go ahead and move my stitch marker. So that way the next time we check in, um, I can tell you where I'm at um, and we can see the progress. There we go. So we have a stitch marker back in place um, and so this is my Lento I haven't really modded the 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 pattern I don't even know how to mod the pattern um, I had a few scary instances where um, when I joined new yarn it created an issue I think I was adding a stitch but thankfully uh, my knitting friends helped me out um, by telling me that I added a stitch. I, I will send uh, pictures of my <laughs> issues and they will uh, thankfully help me out. So yeah, I'm hoping to put on another four inches. Um, actually, I'm hoping to finish the body before we, the time we meet next. Um, I'm not sure when that will be. Uh, I will definitely have some more time on my hands soon. Um, but, uh, I'm not sure. I know that I have a, um, spring making video, knitting and crochet video coming at you. Um, so first before another podcast, uh, so be sure to, uh, subscribe so that you can be alerted when I upload new videos. My second whip, um, so I only have two projects going on right now, although I just wound up yarn to cast on another, I don't know if it's going to be this week, um, but we'll see. Um, so my next project and my final whip is my Indecision Sampler 
shawl, which is a test that I have for Janet Violet Loops. And it is really a fantastic, like thoughtful pattern um, because it's a great way to practice Tunisian crochet because you get to try all these um, types of stitches. So it's a shawl that's divided up into seven sections with um, a different Tunisian crochet like stitch pattern um, in each section separated by another kind of Tunisian crochet stitch. And so what's really great about this is the way she's designed it is you can mix and match however you want and put it in whatever order you want. So for me, I am taking the I don't like stitches and putting them first because I have to do less stitches of them and doing the stitches that I enjoy or I'm a lot speedier at towards the end when I'm having to do, you know, 300, 400 stitches in the whole row. So right now, this is my baby indecision sampler and the yarn is Sorella's um, cashmere sock. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, as much as I love Sorella yarn, I don't know if I like the cashmere. And I don't know if it's because it's just with the Tunisian crochet hook that I have. Maybe if I had one that wasn't as sharp, it wouldn't be as quite of an issue, but I feel like the cashmere doesn't have quite the ply uh, that I would like it to have. So it causes a lot of splitting issues. And I really, I mean, it feels great. Um, and it's a great dye job. Um, so this is um, Hep Alien, which is from the Gilmore Girls collection um, after Lane Kim. And so it's this gorgeous pink, pink's my color. Um, and I love the color and um, I love how squishy and soft it feels. And I know that the final kind of finished shawl is going to look great. Um, I'm just not enjoying crocheting with it quite as much, Tunisian crochet. I might feel different if it were regular crochet, so that would be interesting, something interesting to test. And um, if I have any extra, I might test that theory out. Um, in fact, one of the patterns that I have for my spring kind of crochet and knitting plans is um, is a tee that uses scrap yarn. So if I end up with any scraps, I might put those scraps in um, that tee. So we'll see. But so right now, this is the simple, um, this which is standard for the pattern. So I couldn't put, I actually enjoy the simple stitch, um, but I couldn't put it later in the pattern. Um, simple and then I believe this was the smock and then I'm on the lattice and as I just said with the sincere shawl the lattice is definitely not my favorite the smock is not my favorite either because I don't like that yarn under although it's kind of mindless because it's the same type of yarn under just without crossing over for the purl stitch so it's not too bad it's just when I had to create the dividing section doing that was really hard with the yarn under instead of a yarn over and so yeah so there's seven different stitches for this um so and the pattern comes out in early may so i have about three weeks to finish this up my goal this week um is to have three panels three more panels done so then i'll have five panels in total um done either before we check in if I'm that ambitious and I get another podcast up uh in a week's time or um this week so check my socials because I'm pretty active on uh, reels and shorts um for both YouTube and Instagram so definitely keep an eye on those so you can see my progress but yeah that is the indecision sampler uh, by Jen Lovett of Violet Dot Loops. Again, I'll put all her links below and uh, the pattern will be out in early May. So that is it, my friend. That is all I have to update you on. No acquisitions. 
uh, or anything. My next video coming at you is a spring knitting and crochet uh, video, so be sure to check that out. Um, it'll come out next week if you're watching this in kind of like roughly real time, but about a week later um, from when uh, I post this video. Um, I have some ambitious plans. Some of them are you've already seen. Um, some things are coming back into rotation to finish off. And then I'm going to show you uh, some of the uh, projects and the yarns that I picked out. Some of them were on my Make 12 for the year. Some of them are brand new. So be sure to check it out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I post all things crochet, knitting, yarn, vlogs, fiber festivals. I love it all. And I'd love to take you in on the journey with me. Thank you so much for watching friends and I will see you in the next video. Bye now.